The study is strong for a couple of reasons. For one, it was a lab experiment, so it had many controls. For example, the room in which the participants were administered their oxytocin solution or saline solution was the exact same for each trial, to ensure that there were no confounding variables. Therefore, it can confidently be said that empathy and oxytocin were the variables that were affecting interpersonal distancing, which adds validity to the study. The study is also strong because it was extremely standardized with its procedures for both main experiments, such as the very specific mention of the time that participants were to see the images on their screens, the CID, the pictures of the rooms, the IRI, and many more other details. This means that it can easily be replicated to test for the reliability of the study. The study was also strong because all of its data was quantitative, so it was extremely easy for the experimenters to make comparisons between the conditions to find significant patterns. Additionally, the numerical data helped to ensure the validity of the experiments because it was specific information that was impossible to misinterpret. Finally, another strength is that the CID was performed on a computer. This ensures that all participants saw the exact same stimuli and performed the exact same procedures, which increases validity and replicability. The study is weak for a couple of reasons. First, when the participants were completing the IRI before and during the study, they might have rated differently than they truly felt to make themselves look better than they are, or, more specifically, to look more empathetic than they are. This would reduce the validity of the experiment. Another weakness of the study is that when the participants were given the questionnaires, like the IRI, which only used a four-point scale for the participants to rate how they felt about each question, all the questions were closed, so participants might have been forced into choosing an answer that did not reflect their true opinion. This would also reduce the validity of the experiment. Also, the sample was completely made up of male students, so this could be an issue when trying to generalize the study to women and non-students, since the participants of this experiment could not represent these groups. This is extremely important when it comes to trying to generalize to women, because they typically are more naturally empathetic than men, so it would be impossible to know the effect that oxytocin would have on women's interpersonal distance just from the study. Finally, another weakness was from the computerized CID in Experiment 1. This is because the use of a computerized test rather than a real one decreases ecological validity, since participants don't usually deal with interpersonal distancing when it comes to using a computer. The ethics of the study were good for a couple of reasons. For one, all the participants gave informed consent for the experiments just before they were given their solutions of either oxytocin or saline. Therefore, it is ethical that all of the participants knew what they were getting into and that they were okay with being a part of the experiment. The ethics are also good because after the participants were deceived into picking a room for what they thought would be created for them to have a personal discussion in, they were debriefed about the purpose of the study. Then, they would be able to know the truth about the experiment and not be unaware about what they participated in. This makes the study ethically strong because the deception was lifted and the participants were returned to the state of mind they were before they took place in the study. The ethics of the study could be argued to be bad for a couple of reasons. For one, it could be argued that the deception in this study was completely unnecessary, since the participants could have been asked to rate the room based on where they would feel most comfortable discussing sensitive topics without mentioning the lie that they were going to then have the sensitive conversations later on in their specific room when it was created two weeks later. Another reason why the ethics of the study were bad is because when the participants did experiment one, it could have been stressful for them to imagine the invasion of their personal space since we do not actually know what they were thinking. Lastly, another reason why the ethics of this study were weak is because while the participants waited between experiment two and when they thought they were coming back for a sensitive conversation in a customized room, it could have been stressful for some of the participants to think about talking to a stranger about personal topics. 
This study's results could be useful for hiring people whose jobs involve being close to others, so that the person hiring is able to effectively choose someone who would not mind having their personal space invaded. This is because the person hiring could use the same IRI test for empathy to get an understanding of whether the person they would want to hire would be a good fit for the job. Additionally, the study's results could be used to encourage empathetic hirees to eat more foods that promote the production of oxytocin, like avocados and mushrooms, so that they would feel even less stressed when their personal space is invaded during their job. This study could provide both individual and situational explanations. For example, the participants were grouped into two groups based on their level of empathy, either high or low. Each person's empathy is their own, and it's individually based on their upbringing or hormones. This provides an individual side of the argument. Also, the study provides the situational explanation. When the participants were asked to decide how close they wanted the figures to get to them in Experiment 1, or when they were asked to choose a room in Experiment 2, they were influenced by their current situation. The figure type in Experiment 1 influenced the varying distances of personal space they wanted, and the room layout in Experiment 2 impacted the type of room that they wanted for a personal conversation. The study's results support the argument that nature is the most influential factor because oxytocin is a biological hormone found in the pituitary gland. When it was given to participants during the experiment, it did affect their interpersonal distance. The study's results also support the idea that nurture is a main factor. The participants were basing their judgments of the stop distance in Experiment 1 on what they were comfortable with. In Experiment 2, the participants chose their favorite room layout based on what they personally favored. In the first section, oxytocin is the first blank. The second blank is the amygdala, the third blank is interpersonal situations, and the fourth blank is empathy. The four spatial zones include the intimate zone, the personal zone, the social zone, and the public zone. The psychologies being investigated are interpersonal distance, social hormones, and empathy. The aim of the study is to investigate whether oxytocin will affect interpersonal distance and people who seem to have stronger empathetic skills. Under the hypothesis section, the first blank is high levels, the second blank is lower levels, the third blank is oxytocin, and the last blank is empathy. In this study, there were 54 male participants. They were 19 to 32 years old, and for being in the experiment, they were given either college course credit or payment. In the variables section, the first blank was empathy, the second blank was IRI, the third blank was treatment, the fourth blank was oxytocin, the fifth blank was placebo, the sixth blank was approaching, the seventh blank was distance, and the eighth blank was angles, the ninth blank was the preferred distance, and lastly, the preferred picture choice. The research method for this experiment was a lab experiment. Under the procedure section, the first blank was twice. The second blank is informed consent form. The third blank is testing room. The fourth blank is nostrils. The fifth blank is side effects. The sixth blank is 45 minutes. The seventh blank is the IRI. And the eighth blank is magazines. Under the Experiment 1 Procedure section, the first blank is approaching figure, the second blank is half a second, the third blank is eight, the fourth blank is space bar, the fifth blank is three, the sixth blank is three, the seventh blank is 24, and the eighth blank is percentage. In the Experiment 2 Procedure section, the first blank is personal topics, the second blank is two, the third blank is colored pictures, the fourth blank is four, the fifth blank is 84, the sixth blank is 168, and the seventh blank is two seconds. 
In the next section, the first blank is significantly. The second blank is interaction. The third blank is high. The fourth blank is high. And the fifth blank is low. In the section for results for experiment two, the first blank is high. The second blank is low. The third blank is decreasing. And the last blank is positive correlation. Under conclusions, the first blank is opposite. The second blank is high. And the third blank is low. Under strengths, the first blank is controls. The second blank is validity. The third blank is standardized. The fourth blank is replicated. The fifth blank is quantitative. And the last blank is CID. In the weaknesses section, the first blank is IRI. The second blank is validity. The third blank is closed. The fourth blank is validity. The fifth blank is male. And the last blank is ecological validity. In both of the sections for ethics, the first blank is informed consent. The second blank is debriefed. The third blank is deception. The fourth blank is stressful. And the fifth blank is stressful. In the next section, the blank is hiring. An individual versus situational. The first blank is empathy. And the second blank is empathy. In the last section, the blank is oxytocin.